What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Dab Dab, up in the building. I got a very special guest. He a great man. Entrepreneur. CEO. The new P. Diddy. Give it up for Mr. Kid Clutch Productions. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, Daniel. Thank you for having me on here. No problem. No problem, brother. So, yeah, we're going to get into it with this uh, interview. we got a very special topic. It's going to be about blind floors and NFL scandal. That's right, blind floors. All right, so let's get into it, brother. So, Mr. Kid Clutch, it's always good to have you here, brother. Thank you for coming on, man. And I want to say it's always good to be on here, Dan. That's good. That's good. So, let's get into it. So, when you have this uh, situation with Mr. Brian Flores and how what happened to him was that basically he's trying to prove that systemic racism is in the NFL league. And how basically in terms of like they're hiring him and doing these sham interviews. So let's get into it, man. Like what's going on, brother? And basically what we're gonna be using is some numbers to describe a lot of the stuff they going on because that's what Brian Flores is doing with his lawsuit. And on his he's been talking about the different numbers during his um press tour. And what's going on is the NFL they had a rule that was instituted in 2003 that was called the Rooney Rule. The Rooney Rule was named after the late Pittsburgh Steelers owner, Art Rooney I. And what that states is that each NFL team, if they have a head coach in vacancy, they must hire and they must, no, excuse me, I misspoke on that. They, They must, each team must interview at least two minority candidates before making the decision on who they're going to hire for a coach in vacancy. But with these NFL teams have started doing this, they have started just using the the minority interviews as a sham and to fill a quota. Like they'll say, when they they know what coach they're going to hire already. That's already set in stone. So they'll just say, let me get the minorities out of the way and um, talk to them, just make them think we have an interview. And they have an interview with them, but it's not a realistic, um, fair interview. Mm. So with it, after they do that, they make their decisions. And they, a lot of times, when they're making these decisions, um, they hire um, underqualified white coaches. And these underqualified coaches, they can be Coaches that have been fired multiple times from teams, they may not have a good record as a head coach. Or they will um, hire underqualified assistant coaches. So what will happen is, let's say I'm um, I'm a quarterback's coach in the, no, let's say I'm um, an offensive coordinator. And I've been in the NFL for probably 10 or 15 years. And we have a white candidate that's probably been in the NFL for probably five years, seven years, and they have a quarterback coach. More than likely, that white candidate will get the job over me. Mm. And I have more experience. And this is currently going on right now with um, the Kansas City Chiefs um, offensive coordinator, Eric Bieniemy. He's a black coach. He's overqualified. He's been. He's had the top one of the top five offenses the last few years. He calls the plays for the Kansas City Chiefs. They went to two straight Super Bowls, three straight AFC Championship games, and he can He still doesn't have a job. Mm. And the head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, Andy Reid, he's vouching for um, Eric Ben. I mean, he's like, why? Why is he not getting jobs? He's like, none of my other assistant coaches. My white assistant coaches, they didn't go through this. He's like, he calls the plays and everything. But he's saying when it comes to this coach, he can't get, nobody going to give him a serious interview. And then there's, um, there's uh, rumors going around in NFL circles between certain NFL organizations. They're putting out that, well, Eric Bianami doesn't do good in job interviews. And it's like, the other ones that you're hiring, they if that's if that's true, the ones that you're hiring, they 
they do good. They don't, they may do good and get job interviews, but they don't necessarily qualify for the job, or they're not even competent to do the job over. Mm. And basically, I want to get back to the Rooney Rule. The Rooney Rule was instituted because two head coaches got fired that year. Tony Dungy, he had a winning record, and he got fired from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the late, great Dennis Allen, he was the Minnesota Vikings head coach. He had a losing season, but that was probably his first or second losing season. And the first chance they got, they just fired him. So the NFL coaches and stuff, the NFL got involved and said, this is a problem. And at the time, they only had three black head coaches when this was instituted. Mm. And now the NFL currently has one black head coach, and that's Mike Tomlin of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And actually, the Rooney Rule worked for his benefit because the Rooney's, it, they had a head coach in candidate in mind. He was actually an offensive line coach of the Steelers that they wanted to hire. But they interviewed Mike Tomlin last, and they were so impressed with Mike Tomlin's interview, they was like, no, he got to be our head coach. And Mike Tomlin went on to become the, the youngest head coach in history to win a Super Bowl. And also, he became the second black coach to win a Super Bowl. Mm. And I, I want to piggyback to Tony Dungy. Tony Dungy, he got fired from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers after having a 9-7 and seven record. That's that crazy. That the best record, but that's still a winning record. It's a above 500 record. And Tony Dungy, after he got fired, they said this is a problem. So um, they, inter- they implemented the Rooney Rule. And Tony Dungy went to work as the head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. And he became, in 2006, the first black coach in NFL history to win a Super Bowl. And Tony Dungy is now in the Hall of Fame. That's crazy. Yeah. And then, let me go to... Percentages. Yeah, that's impressive as hell, man. That's that's crazy. I can't. That's a he first coach wins Super Bowl, then one was fired, but he still had a winning record. And then they invented that rule. And that's yeah. man. Can't believe the history of the NFL, man. Yep. And guess what? Um, the Rooney Rule was instituted in 69.7 black players in the NFL. Now they have 58%. Mm. With a league that has 58% black players, why are they only one black head coach? What are they trying to say? That black men can't lead? Black men are not smart enough to be head coaches in the league? You don't want that black coach to represent your franchise? Is that what you're saying? And it's the problem where it's going to is that the NFL, they keep moving the goalposts. They'll say, when they don't hire a black coach, they'll say, what they started out saying is, early on is, we didn't get our first black quarterback until, I think, Fritz Pollard. I, if I'm not mistaken, Fritz Pollard was the first black head coach in NFL history, and I think he was a uh, May have been the first black player. Hmm. They moved the goal for us. First they say, oh, you can't throw. Now they're saying, oh, you, you can't lead or you can't run or. Yeah, it's always something. Like we always had with black people and people were saying, why are you always talking about race? And what does race have to do with all this? It has to do with a lot of this stuff because mm-hmm. telling people with America is been systemically racism from its beginning. It's been built on it. That's the foundation. So that's what we keep. This is why we keep finding ourselves in these situations. Yeah. Because when the NFL was created in 1921, 
correct me if I'm wrong, they, um, there weren't any black players. Yep. And so Fritz Pollard came in the league. And then what's going on too with the NFL is that you no know, NFL was founded in 1920. Fritz Pollard came in the league in 1921. So it was found there was no black players in the NFL until he came along. And then also, too, there weren't black coaches. There weren't black general managers. Mm. There were black quarterbacks. Doug Williams, he was the first black quarterback to win a Super Bowl. And I think play on. And he won the Super Bowl with the Washington, then Washington Redskins. Yeah. Um, now they call themselves the Washington Commanders, but uh, that's 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 another story for another time. You know, personally, yeah. I, I don't I don't agree with the name. I think they should call themselves the Washington Warriors, but that's just yeah. my opinion. Or the Washington Generals. Yeah, but uh, the name is corny. Yeah. But, um, with Doug Williams, once Doug Williams won the Super Bowl, he started breaking barriers. We started seeing more black quarterbacks in NFL. We started seeing Randall Cunningham. Um, uh, Warren Moon, um, Donovan McNabb, Michael Vick. Mm -hmm. Then we move to modern times. Um, Cam Newton, RG, Robert Griffin III. Yep. And, and, yeah, my boy Russell Wilson, the Seattle Seahawks, going now to Super got, Bowl. Going to... Now we got Patrick Mahomes, oh, Lamar Jackson. Yep. We had um, Colin Kaepernick. Um, yeah, Colin Kaepernick, Deshaun Watson, um, Dak Prescott, Dak Prescott, um, and who else? I think we just named all the quarterbacks right there, all the black quarterbacks. It's a lot. There's many more. Yeah. They had, and even um, we want to get to uh, Brian Leftwich. He became um. Uh, he was the he's the offensive coordinator of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and he can't get a job. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Ridiculous. And the problem is, which started off in the NFL, they used to say, "Well, black guys couldn't play quarterback," and then it translated to after that, black guys they couldn't play safety because they weren't smart enough, mm. and they broke down those barriers. Yep. And that's why we have a lot of issues that's going on because a lot of the black players that played the NFL they played on defense. Well, they play wide receiver. Yeah. They play running back. They play positions like that. So a lot of them wasn't getting these offensive coordinator jobs. So most of them, they were defensive line coaches, um, defensive back coaches, defensive coordinators. They had more of a defensive background. So they, they weren't getting hired because they were saying, well, these are de defense. The league is going into offense. Now we're starting to get offensive coordinators. Now they're saying, oh, no, they don't qualify. They don't call the plays. Yeah. And most of these black guys as offensive coordinators, they call the plays. Yep. And you have white guys. I, 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 I want to name one white guy that just got the job. He, he's currently the um, offensive coordinator for the NFC champion um, Los Angeles Rams, Kevin O'Connell. Mm. He doesn't call the plays. The head coach, Sean McVay, calls the plays. And I don't understand, like, it's a different, it's like it's a double standard for white pe people and black people. Mm -hmm. They say, oh, you don't qualify, you don't qualify, they don't qualify. And then when they get into it, it's, oh, they overqualify. Yeah. And this is crazy, and it's so hard because they're telling black people, well, why don't you fix it? And it's like, we don't control anything in the NFL. Yeah. We control very little. It's so very little. And it's an old boys club on the ownership level. A lot of these owners, if you, the average years of owners in the NFL, they said is um, 39 years ownership. They Those teams rarely come up for, for sale. Mm-hmm. That's craziness. It's like these own like the um the owner for Dallas Cowboys, the Jones, he was like, Oh, 
when the whole controversy with Colin Kaepernick came out, he was like, oh, you will shut up and play. He was saying that because that's that's how he's been that's how he was taught and stuff. Yeah. That's how he's taught to think about black people in the NFL. They yeah. just they're just tools and means to an end. They just shut up and play. Yeah. Shut up and throw that damn ball. That's what they that's what they think of him. And I think that's another problem too that we gotta dispel is society. I think this is why the NFL is the way it is because it's a microcosm of society. If society views black people as less than what do you think these NFL owners and these other NFL coaches is going to view us as? Yep. Because if you think about it, if you say your most formative years is your teenage years to your 20s mm-hmm. when you're in college. If you look, you think about a Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones' most formative years, black people in this country would have thought that as, as less than. They weren't allowed to drink at certain water fountains. Mm-hmm. They weren't allowed to go to school. They weren't allowed to eat at restaurants. So Jerry, they didn't into, Jerry Jones, he played college football at the University of Arkansas. No, no, the University of Oklahoma. And that, that team was all white. They had not integrated that. They didn't integrate into Jerry Jones, I think, was in his mid to late 20s. So that type of thinking... People have that way of thinking, and I even know it. Yeah. People, I think what they say is people think of racism as, well, I don't like black people. No, it's not just that. Racism can be, you can, you can like a black person or like black people, but in your mind, you can think, well, black people are less than. Yeah. Or you can say you can have certain views about black people. And I think that's what's really going on in America now is like, you have people, white people that surround here that's saying, well, I'm not racist. I don't believe in racism. Why y'all call me that? And it's like, yeah, but you have racist tendencies. So mm-hmm. it does make you racist, too. Yep. And that's what I think what's going on right now is that in America, it's a lot of people, they're thinking of racism as just a singular thing, as a um, societal thing. Not... They're not thinking of it as a societal thing. They're thinking of it as what it was in like the 50s. The 60s, they're saying, well, we came a long way. Yeah, we have. And they still have a lot to do. Mm-hmm. And what's going on is we're seeing more of the systemic racism now. Yep. Part of it is that NFL owners, there's no black NFL owners. Yep. There's... I think one or two minority owners, and I can name one, and that's um, Shot Khan. He owns the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yep. And he got his own problems, too. Okay, we'll address at a later time. Yeah, but for right now, this something needs to be done about the whole Florida situation. So what do you think is going to happen with the Florida situation? you think it's going to prove systemic racism that we've been seeing on here that's been happening in the NFL, or do you think it's going to blow up big? I think it's going to prove because the numbers speak for itself. If you have they, ten, 10 years ago, we had eight black head coaches in the league. Today, we have one. 20 years ago, we had three. Today, we have one. It, it, it goes to what I was saying with systemic racism is black people, they weren't, a lot of white people acquired their wealth through slavery yep. on their slaves. And a lot of them, they acquired it through public government funds. Mm-hmm. Like the GI Bill, um, the Franklin Roosevelt New Deal. Yep. It built houses for um, the veterans coming back from World War II. And then we had, they were um, even slave owners, they received reparations. Yep. After slaves were free. And what's going on in NFL is like a lot of the black people, they were shut off from a lot of this wealth. So we, we're behind. Do you know that the richest person in the world, Elon Musk, is worth $260 billion? No, I did not know that. How much is how much the um, richest black person in America is worth? I don't know. How much? $6.7 billion. Hmm. That's a huge gap. Yeah. Robert Smith. 
And right now, he has a chance to buy the um, Denver Broncos. They went up for sale the other day. And his name is in the run it. But here's the catch to it. The NFL, the majority of the NFL owners have to approve a sale. It doesn't matter if you have the money or not. They have to let you in. Basically, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Craziness. Craziness. It's yeah. tragic. Tragic. Ridiculousness. And it is, that's where our problems go is that we don't own much. Yeah, that's why we need to take control. We need to take control. Yes. But in order to do that, we have to get, we have to get a equal amount of shares of wealth. I, I, let me rephrase the opportunities to get wealth. Mm-hmm. That's what's going on. It's like even in society, people don't understand it. It's still the white person still has an advantage over blacks or even Hispanics getting jobs, getting um, these opportunities. And I think they said it was only six. It had only been sixteen black head coaches in the last twenty years in the NFL, and it's thirty-two jobs. And they turn over, I think, 160 times in that span, the turnover rates. And they've only got 16 of those. Mm. And it's showing, like, the NFL has a huge problem with systemic racism. And I'm not, when I'm talking about the NFL, I'm not talking about the NFL league currently. The um, NFL offices in New York, Roger Goodell and Troy Vincent. I'm talking about the NFL owners. Yep. They are the problem because they're not going into a lot of these interviews with open mind. They're already going in there saying, oh, well, let me just get this over with. Let me get this over yeah. with. And this happened, too, with the Oakland Raiders. <laughs> they, uh, when they hired John Rudin, they didn't even uh, interview any black or minority candidates. They went and talk, spoke with him and gave him the job, but they didn't, it was about the leak. People didn't want to, um, and they said, well, we follow the Rooney rule and all this. And it's like, how do y'all think it's going to work like that? Yeah. And what's going on with Brian Flores is, Brian Flores, he went to interview for the New York Giants job. He Actually, he didn't even interview yet. He scheduled an interview on that Thursday. Mm-hmm. And the coach of the Patriots, Bill Belichick, he sent Brian Flores the message and said, right, congratulations, Brian. You, um, I'm so proud of you. I'm glad you got the job and stuff. But Brian Flores is kind of confused on what was going on. Because there was a um, Brian Flores, uh, Brian Dable. Yeah. That was the offensive coordinator of the um, – uh, Buffalo Bills, they both coached under Bill Belichick with the Patriots. Yeah. He had a relationship with both Bryant, but he got the wrong name. When he sent the text to him, he thought he was talking to Brian Dable, but it was Brian Flores that he sent the text to. Yeah. And Brian Flores said, hey, coach, are you talking about, this is Brian Flores, are you talking about me or Brian Dable? And Coach Belichick said, hey, I effed up. I'm sorry, Brian. He's like, um, um, I thought I was sending it to Dable. He apologized, but what happens is, is here's where the problem comes in at. How did he know that he got the job if Brian Flores didn't go and do the interview yet? Yeah. On that Thursday. That's where it's sounding fishy. Yeah, it's like, wait a second. Like You already had it in your mind that that uh, the other Brian was going to get the job, not and Brian Flores. Bill Belichick, he coached with the Giants for 15 years as an assistant coach. He started as a defensive line coach and rose up the defensive coordinator. And he nearly became their head coach at one time. Mm. So he has a relationship with the owners of the Giants. So somebody from that organization probably told him, was in contact with him. And told him, hey, this person going to get the job. Yeah, your boy Brian... It's probably gonna, it's gonna get the job. He's, and that's another problem is if we're having a fair process, 
how is people getting this information? Yeah. Like you said, it's an old boys club. They're like, oh, yeah. we're going to get uh, we gonna get uh, our old boys to get, to get the job. Sorry, Brian Flores, you ain't going to get the job. We're going to have the other Brian get the job, even though you're more qualified. Yeah. It's craziness. Yeah. And I'm gonna I'm 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 read out Brian Flores' record from um, when he became head coach of the Dolphins. His first season, he had a rookie quarterback. He was five and eleven. His second season, ten and six, and his season, twenty twenty one season. This was his last season. Was nine and eight. So that's two winning seasons out of three. And what I want to get to, too, is what said the heart of the scandal, too, is that Brian Flores made an allegation saying that the owner of the Dolphins, Stephen Ross, um, offered him $100,000 per game to tank. And what tanking means is that you lose on purpose mm. so you can get draft picks. And Brian Flores told him, no, I'm not doing that crazy and they had this is where their relationship deteriorated he ended up firing him because he did not take and it's like this is where the question is going to because Hugh Jackson he was the head coach of the Cleveland Browns yeah now the head coach of Jackson not Jackson State Grambling State and he said owner Offered him money too to lose, and it's like, okay, this this is becoming a problem because it's like you messing with the integrity of the game now. Yeah, Ooh. it's and then we got X. I think every white coach should be asked this question: Has an owner ever told you that? And if they haven't, it's that's clear signs of systemic racism. Yep. Because it's like you, you want to set up the brothers to fail, so that, that a white guy can come in and save the day and reap the benefits of what he built. Yeah, and it's it's crazy. Yeah, man, the foolishness, man, it's just ridiculous. Like if you, yeah, all the white coaches, they should be asked the question: Have you been, have you been told, hey, we're gonna give you a certain amount of money to lose a game? Or to lose, so that way we can get some more draft picks and stuff. And if you haven't, that that's a problem. That means it's been systemic racism in the NFL. Can't do that. And also, like you said, Tyler, they're interfering with the game too. That means that oh, now the game's being affected because now people are questioning if the leagues. The people have already been questioning if the NFL is legitimate, but now if you if this cold controversy is coming out, it's like hey. That's proven that hey, people are right. Oh, it's not legitimate. Oh, it's rigged and stuff. It ruined the integrity of the game of sports of the NFL. Uh huh. And also too, I want to get the Hugh Jackson. Hugh Jackson, he was the head coach of the um, Cleveland Browns for three years, and he said that the owner of the Cleveland Browns, he alleged that Jimmy Haslam, um. Offered him, I think it was, I don't want to say the wrong number, a couple thousands of dollars, like hundreds of thousands of dollars to um, tank. Mm -hmm. He was like, um, no, I don't want this. And he, um, he didn't take the money, but they put it in his check as a bonus. Mm. He went to the NFL commissioner and they didn't do anything about it. And Hugh Jackson they gave him a contract extension after that. Mm. And he's like, if I only won one game, why am I getting a contract extension? Yeah. I'm a losing coach. And they paid the tank. He said it was a four-year process they wanted to tank for. Mm. And his record with the Cleveland Browns was 1-15, 0-16, and 2-5. and five. He got fired in 2018 season. Mm. And he ended up working with the... Um, um, Cincinnati Bengals. Mm. He under Marvin Lewis. He was a. Uh, he worked as I think a defensive specialist or something. Mm -hmm. 
And also, Marvin Lewis had a story talking about uh, what he went through with the um, Cincinnati Bengals. And he was the head coach for 16 years. And he was saying how, like, a lot of these owners, they're sabotaging these coaches. Yep, and they want them to lose. Yeah. And it's like, this is a problem. And yes, like I said, if any of these things are truth, both of those owners should be forced to sell their teams. Yep. And forced out of being for the league. This is a problem. Well, so what are your final thoughts on the whole blind force controversy and scandal and everything? Do you think that this will bring the systemic racism to light in the NFL? I think judging by the numbers, it's already been brought to light. But I think Brian Flores may be the first person that can actually make systemic changes in the NFL based off of the allegations he's made. Based off of the awareness that he's raised, one of these issues. Yep. My closing thoughts is after finding out this information about Blind Forest and the scandal, I think that that's going to be a big controversy and everything. But he's going, he is going to bring changes to the NFL, and basically, he is going to showcase all the systemic racism that's been going on in the NFL for years, and how it's going to be brought to light. Now it's been brought to light. They're going to make real changes in the NFL league. That's what I think is going to happen. Well, I think this is the closing thoughts on the Black Evolution. We're coming back. Tune in the next following weeks for more greatness and great episodes. This is Dab Daniel and Clear Clutch, and we signing off. Hey, 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 hey.